Olive. Oh. Oh, That's my man. alarm. It's time to go live. <laughs> That's an awesome alarm. I really like that. Uh, okay. My, my, my son is obsessed with Star Wars, so I did it as a little homage to him. Well, I knew that I loved your son for a reason. We're going to let people join here. Do we need me to share anywhere? Uh, yeah, we need to share everywhere. <laughs> Let's get this ball rolling. We can you, you we can sh share. You can share in the groups. I'm going to share the Zoom link here real quick. And do, do, do. invite. Yeah, so this is the first for people joining. This is the first in what hopefully will be a series of webinars on super powered modules. So we're starting with a call to action because it's a pretty fun one. Um, but the idea will be to go through each of the Divi modules and create some awesome effects. Yeah, I am going to raise my desk and stand. Hi, Alex. We have Alex live on Facebook joining us right now. We've got a few people. I'm going to post the Zoom link on Facebook and pin it to the top if anyone wants to join us and then I'll pin it that typically is it typically is a whole lot better on uh, on on zoom than it is on Facebook but maybe Facebook's getting better uh, so the zoom links pin SJ where do I need to do I need to share it in the other groups um let me, uh, I'll share it into the, the transforming group. Okay. That'd be good. Hi, Karen. I'll do a little wave. <laughs> I want to wave with everybody. All right. And comment. Got a little go-go juice. A little coffee in my WordPress cup. If you're ever wondering what you can get me for Christmas, it's coffee cups. <laughs> I uh, I have a, a I love I love coffee, and uh, my coffee cups all have meaning. So I get them in special places and stuff, and that's kind of my thing: coffee and stickers. So okay, I can't abide by stickers. I can't bring myself to put them on my laptop. Uh, it's okay. We'll convert you. We'll convert you. Every time I do, I just feel feel bad. I end up taking them off. <laughs> All right. So obviously we're going to do a series of webinars. Like SJ said, if you're just joining us, it's going to be about super powering Divi modules. Today we're going to start with a call to action module and then a series of how you can supercharge your, your Divi modules with a little CSS and stuff. Before we dive off into this webinar, because I don't know that we'll do another one before next Wednesday, which is 4th of July here in the United States, Independence Day. Uh, I hope everybody has a safe and happy holiday here in the U.S. if you're celebrating uh, with fireworks, be safe and stuff. We are doing a promotion on Divi Space, Aspen Grove Studios, all of our websites, we've got some pretty good promotions. It's kind of hard to miss that big, gigantic orange bar at the top, but we've got some coupon codes up there if you want to take advantage of some of those products and stuff. SJ, we ready to rock and roll? I love how patriotic you guys are. <laughs> Ma makes me nearly proud to be an American. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna let um, you yeah, I'm over. ready to, to start. Let me just uh, Man, we're getting share my screen, I guess. Of, all kinds of reactions from the from the people. Hi Karen. Karen joining us on Zoom. Yeah, hey everyone. Let me just uh, share my screen and then I can talk through exactly what we're gonna do today. Yeah, let me make sure I'm looking at the right screen this time to confirm. 
and your screen is being shared, SJ. So we're good to go. Awesome. So what we're going to do today, then, we're going to look at the CTA module um, within Divi, and we're going to look at three CSS-powered tricks um, that we can do to that. Uh, one of the um, tricks that we're going to do is we're going to create some type text animation. Typically, this is something that people would use uh, JavaScript or jQuery for, maybe the, the typed JS library. Um, but if you're only going to do it on like one line or a couple of lines on your site, I don't really think it makes sense to load an entire JavaScript library just to do that. So we're going to show you a way to do that or emulate that style with pure CSS. Um, we're also going to look at how we can create an image fade rotation. So if we look on uh, this orange CTA here, what we'll do is we'll, when we hover over it, an image will come in um, and then it will rotate in. It's going to be this image here. It's of my, my little boy, Eli. It was his first day working for daddy. So we're going to put that image in the back of the CTA. Um, and then awesome on this one, we're going to create a sunrise. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he took too many poop breaks, but apart from that, it was a good first day. <laughs> we did all right. <laughs> Um, and then the, the next thing that we're going to do then is we're going to create a sunrise transition. So effectively what this is, is it's a small um, yellow or orange background that starts in one corner and grows to fill the space. Um, all three of these are quite cool. They're very easy to use. The CSS that we're going to show you can be copied straight into um, Divi's CSS options or into a child theme and it should work seamlessly. Um, we'll drop that code in the comments after this webinar. We'll also be releasing a blog as per usual with these webinars that has all of the information that you need in them. So by all means, please do use this. If you do use it, share it with us. Tell us how you've used it. We, we're always excited to hear about those things. If you have any questions, ask them as we go. And our, our, our DJ David um, will <laughs> we'll spin those questions to me and then I'll try and answer them as I go. Absolutely. So the first one that we're going to do then, let's start off with um, the image fade. So all I'm going to do here then is I'm going to create um, a before um, element out of CSS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try and find my mouse. There we go. I'm going to open up now on the video, David, my head and your head isn't blocking this. We're not on the screen Nope, I don't see us on the screen at, at in the all. Way of the customizer. Okay, good. Yeah. Now remember, I've got two monitors going, and it is different than it normally is for me. Usually, I do see our heads, but I don't right now. So maybe somebody who's watching it live can let us know if our heads in the ways. Uh, okay, and good. We can transition it to the other side. So either Karen on Zoom or John, Alex, or somebody on Facebook Live, if you don't mind typing and let us know if uh actually i can see on the live video sj that our heads are in the way so they are okay what, i'll move i'll move, move over to the other side i'll shimmy on over yeah, to the left hand side Make the my feet. Side. there you go okay so the only thing that i've done in prep for this then is that i've given the uh, call to actions their own classes so for the typed one um i've popped in a class of typed um, for the image fade, I've popped in a class of image fade, you know, keep it simple and all that. Um, and on the last one, I've typed in a class of sunrise. Um, and I'm going to use those classes to create the CSS. So um, if you're doing this, then obviously you'll need to use your own selectors. And this just ensures that the CSS is only running where you need it to. So the first one that we're going to do, then we're going to create a before um, element. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type and here I'm going to do some things to make sure that that shows up. So I'm going to display block and this is the same thing that I do whenever I'm creating an element um, out of a before or after class. So I'm going to display block. I'm going to position it absolute. I'm going to put it left zero top zero Width, 100%. Height, 100%. And then I'm going to put content 
I'm not going to put any content in there because I don't actually want anything in there. Um, and then I'm going to do background red. And you can see there um, that we've got the background, but actually I was trying to do the image fade. So let's change that class to image fade. And there we go. So we've created this, um, this solid block out of nothing more than CSS. So the next thing I'm going to do, instead of having the background as red, I'm just using that to make sure that it actually worked. I'm going to create the background out of a URL. So to do that, I'm just going to write URL. I'm going to create some brackets. Um, and then inside, I'm going to grab the URL for our image. And I'm going to pop that in. And you can see there that the image is in there, although not how we'd want. So we need to do some things here. We need to do background size cover. Um, and then we need to do background position center. So there we go. The image is in there now. Um, so what I'm going to do here now is now I know that that's working, I'm going to adjust these other things to do other to do some more stuff. So actually, I need the image to be a little bit bigger um, than it currently is. I need it to overlap the sides just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do left as minus 20% the same as top, top is minus 20% too. Um, and then I'm gonna make the image bigger so that it still fills the space. So if I'm minus 20% and I wanna overlap, I'd need to be 120% width just to get back to the edge, but I wanna go over it too. So I'm gonna to go to 140%. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make the image much bigger um, than it needs to be, which is what I want it to do for now. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, grab the class um, and I'm going to create some more CSS. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to put position relative um, and then I'm going to put overflow hidden. And what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that my before class or my before element um, doesn't escape the original elements widths and heights. So even though it's actually bigger, as we know by doing this, um, you'd never know by looking at it. So that's what we want to happen for now. So what we also want to happen is I want to transform this image. I want to rotate it ever so slightly to start with. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put transform rotate, opening up some brackets again, and then I'm going to make a decision about what I want to do here. So let's try 10 degrees. That's the, that's a good amount of rotation, um, but it's going the wrong way. So I'm just going to put it as minus 10 degrees because I want it to go that way. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to effectively undo all of these things on hover. So firstly, let me just get the opacity right down to Let's try 0 0.1, see what that looks like. That's not quite where I want it to be. Mm, that looks okay. And even though um, the opacity is right down, you can see that it is still sitting. It's sitting above the text, so I can no longer grab that text or anything, which I don't want. So let me just adjust the Z index here as well, because I do want the orange to show through like that. As you can see, the default Z index was hiding that. So I'm going to set the Z index to zero. Now, if I delete this and then add it again, okay, that looks fine now. Um, so Z indexing can change depending on whether you've clicked on an element or how an element loads in the first place. Um, and it's all to do with focus and things like that. So if you want to make sure that this is exactly right, then you would delete the, the, uh, the CSS that you're writing, reload the page, load the CSS again, and just make sure on load everything's working properly as it should be. Um, right. So what I'm going to do here then is I'm going to copy all of this um, and I'm going to paste it underneath, and then here, 
I'm going to pop the hover um, pseudo class in before the before element. So remember, it always goes hover before, not before hover. Before hover won't work. Um, it's, a, it's an easy mistake to make, and then it just won't work, and it will throw you off. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to undo all of those changes that I made. So I'm going to set left back to zero. I'm going to set top back to zero. I'm going to set the width back to 100%. I'm going to set the height back to 100%. I'm going to leave content as it is. I'm going to leave background as it is. And because I'm leaving it as it is, I'm just going to delete them. If there's no change, then I don't need to keep them in the hover selector. So let's get rid of those. Um, background size isn't changing, so we'll leave that. Background position isn't changing. Um, opacity is going to change. The transform is going to change, and the Z index isn't going to change. So I can get rid of those. So essentially, all you want to be keeping um, in the hover before selector is the stuff that you have changed. So that starts to look like this. I'm going to put the rotation down to zero. And what we should see there now is a flick between the rotated image um, and the standard image. But obviously, we don't want that kind of horrible, janky transition. So we're going to add a transition of one second, ease all. Um, and what that is, so we're saying uh, the transition should take one second. We want it to ease. So rather than just be a, a line of transition, we want it to kind of to build as it goes. You could have ease, you could have ease in, ease in and out. Um, it's up to you. We'll just leave it as ease. And you can see there that we've got this nice effect now when we hover over the call to action. So that is the, um, the image fade rotation um, CSS, we'll call that. So that's the first one. Are there any questions on that? We whizzed through it a little bit. Don't worry, we are gonna share the code. Does anybody have any questions or anything on that? You're muted, David. I just realized I'm muted, SJ. <laughs> no, no questions, um, just comments. Uh, and they're basically giving you the thumbs up saying great advice on what you shared so far. So good questions. Don't feel free, feel free to ask them. And they say it's crystal clear. So I'm going to mute me back so I don't accidentally pop in here instead of you. Okay, good. So the next thing that we're going to do then is we're going to do the uh, the sunrise transition. So I'm going to get rid of this CSS. Um, we're going to leave that and we're going to just concentrate on this sunrise transition. So the first thing that I want to do then, just how I did here, I'm going to create an element out of nothing using the before class or the before pseudo class. So this time I'm targeting sunrise. And then in here, I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to set content to nothing. I'm going to set uh, the display to block position to absolute. Um, and then I'm going to do width. I'm going to change all this afterwards anyway, but I need to make sure that everything that I'm doing is working. So at the moment, I'm just going to set width to 50 pixels height to 50 pixels um, background to red so you can see the element there it's just popped onto screen um, and then we're going to do left of zero pull it right over to the edge um, bottom zero pull it right down to the bottom um, and then we're going to do a border radius to make it round. I'm going to set the border radius to 50%. If you're going to use border radius of 50%, make sure the thing that you're um, editing is a square, because otherwise you're going to end up with an egg shape, unless an egg shape is what you want, and then don't worry about that. Um, if you are trying to create curved edges, you can use pixels instead of um, percentage if you know the exact um, size of the element that you're trying to change. But if you're just trying to make a circle out of a square, then you can just set border radius to 50%. Um, at the moment, that's sitting 
inside of the element rather than what I want to do is just for one quarter of that circle to be on display. So what I would normally do um, is just go minus 25 pixels, minus 25 pixels um, for bottom and left. But as what I'm actually trying to do um, at the moment is cover that whole area with this object, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put width up to... Um, let's do 300% and just see if it covers. It's huge. That should cover it. Um, I'm going to do height of... Let's do I was going to say I was going to say one million percent. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then let's do so. We basically want to counteract these values to make sure that the center of the circle is sitting into the corner of this element here. So what we'll do here is we will say if the width was three hundred percent, then left will be uh, minus one hundred and fifty percent, and if the height is 500%, then the bottom will be minus 250%. You can play around with these values as you go. As you can see, that's plenty big enough to fill that space. Um, at the moment, it's filling a lot more than that space. So let's grab that class um, and then place it here. And we're going to do the same thing we did to the other one. So we're just going to put position relative. Um, and then we're going to put overflow hidden. So we can see there that that red um, massive thing that we created is more than enough to cover the base. So I'm just going to change the color of this to more of a sort of sunsetty orange. Uh, I think the Divi space orange is FF8900 or something like that. FF8500 um, SJ. Oh, I stand corrected. So let's use that. Um, so there we go. So we've got this nice orange uh, now. So what we'll do is we'll close this off. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before. So, in, But what we're going to do instead is we're going to change this one to the hover before. So let's copy this. Change this value to hover before not hither. Um, and then we're going to reset these to the, the default. So uh, reset to zero, height to zero, left to zero, bottom to zero. Border radius can stay 50%. Um, so we don't need that in here. Um, background is going to stay the same, so we don't need that in there. Position absolute display block content is all going to stay the same, so we don't need that. So essentially, we're left with four properties um, and values here. So you can see there again, we're getting that straight change over, which is what we don't want. So what we will do here is we will add a transition of let's make it 1.4 seconds ease in out all and you can see there that we've got that nice transition happening there where that's growing now because you'll notice that when i hover off the transition takes a little while to start. And the reason being is that even though we can't see it, the transition is actually undoing way up here. This is where the element came up to. So that's where the, the, that's where the animation is starting. And we're only seeing it once it starts getting into this, this element, um, which creates that nice delay in the transition doing and undoing. So that's all you need to create that sunrise um, transition effect um, really draw some attention to your CTAs. So that is effect number two. Is there any questions or anything on that, David? Yes, I have a question, SJ. So since 4th of <laughs> July is coming up and you've got the sunrise growing, could you put a hover effect on the button to where something would go pow, sunrise and pow? 
you know, I don't want you to do that right now, but that's where my, my mind went when, since we're talking with a call to action and we're drawing, you know, you could do anything you wanted. So using this same effect, when you hover over just the button, um, you could have the stars striped, the star spangled banner drop down from behind it. <laughs> you could have fireworks go off. It's completely up to you. The same way that I added an image URL earlier, you could add a video URL. You could have fireworks going on in the background if you wanted to. Oh, well, I love it. I don't see any questions right now. I think we're good other than a couple of comments. Uh, makes sense. Very cool. SJ James, you're a CSS addict. I love it. Right. Okay. So we're done on number two then. So the last one is probably the, the most interesting one, which is to create a type effect. Now, before I go through that, um, yes, I know there are a hundred before somebody says it, I know there are a hundred different ways to do it. I know there are loads of JavaScript libraries that will do this for you. But if you don't want to load them, if you just want to do this on like a title or a line of text, um, and you just want to use some basic CSS, um, this is the way to do it. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to create, and we're using, um, uh, essentially I'm bastardizing uh, a snippet from uh, CSS tricks to do this. Um, and adjusting it for Divi, but this will work for you and you'll have to adjust the values yourself um, if you're gonna use this. So we know that this uh, text here is H2. I can find that by inspecting the element and knowing that um, it also has a, class, a custom class. I have given this um, entire CTA the class of typed. So what I can do here um, is I can say, Type H2, and then on here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put border right 0.1 EM, and then I'm gonna make it solid, and I'm gonna make it white. You can make it whatever color you want, but uh, uh, normally you would make it the same color as your text. That would be a, a, a kind of normal thing to do. Now, you'll notice that that's way over here. We're gonna fix that in a little while. Um, but essentially, this is going to be the kind of the, the cursor um, or the carrot that blinks when you when you type. So this is how we're going to create that out of CSS. So the next thing that I'm going to do then is I'm going to adjust um, the width of this area so that my carrot at this point sits at the end of this text. So I'm going to put width. Um, and I'm going to take a guess at, say, 300 pixels. Don't worry that it's just gone way over to the left. We won't worry about that yet. Um, so we want to come down from there, basically. So let's do 280, uh, 270. 270 looks okay, so we'll leave it at 270. Um, the next thing I'm going to do um, is set margin to zero auto. So what that's gonna do there is it's going to set two values for the margin on this. So it's gonna set zero for top and bottom. So I don't want any margin on the top. Or maybe I do, maybe I want like 10 pixels. Um, and then, you know, that looks okay. Maybe, maybe 20. Um, and then auto, what that's going to do is whatever the space is on the left and the right hand side, it's going to automatically um, place this in the middle. So essentially doing um, margin something auto is a really good way of centrally aligning uh, block or inline block elements. It works quite well. So we've done that here. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put white space. Uh, no wrap. Um, I'm going to put overflow hidden um, and this will make more sense once we start the animation. But essentially what I want to do is I want to make sure that um, when the width is smaller, um, the text is disappearing. So the same way that we made the image and the, um, the big circle disappear, we're going to do the same with the text. So essentially um, when we lower our width, um, 
you won't be able to see the text. And as we slowly bring our width to larger, more of the text will appear. Now, when that carrot is going blink, 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 it's going to create the um, illusion that we are we are typing. Um, so that's pretty much all I need to do in terms of uh, CSS. The next thing that I need to do is I need to create some animations. So I'm going to create two, um, and I'm going to create a keyframe animation. So bear in mind that if you're doing this yourself, um, you're going to want to run this through some kind of CSS linter to make sure that you're getting like the WebKit and the MS versions of, anim of the animations. Um, so the first one that I'm going to create then, so I'm just going to do at keyframes um, and I'm going to do type and I'm going to do from width zero. So what we're doing here um, normally with a keyframe animation you would create a from and a to um, with you know some value here. Um, what we're doing is we're doing just a, a from. So we know what our width wants to end up as. We want it to end up as 270 pixels. What we're doing with this keyframe animation is saying where we want our width to start. Um, sometimes you'll see these more often expressed as like 0%, 100% and things like that. But from and to work just fine too. Um, so we're going to leave that as from width um, of zero. Um, and then the next thing that we're going to do slightly wrong syntax there. Um, we are going to create an animation for our carrot next. So all we're going to do here is going to say uh, keyframes again. We're going to say at 50%, border color should be equal to transparent. So what that's going to do is 50% through this animation. We're going to run this animation on infinite. So this animation is going to, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And at 50% each time, it's going to turn transparent. So this little uh, side border is going to be going blink, blink, blink. Um, and that's how we're going to create our typing effect. So we've got our keyframes for type, we've got our keyframes for carrot, and now we need to add those two things into our CSS. So going back down into our typed H2 then, um, we're going to do animation type. So referring to the animation name that we've, we've written up here. Uh, and, and you could write animation name and then type, but because we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff after this, we're going to just leave it as animation type. Um, we're going to set it to uh, six seconds and we're going to do it in steps. Um, and in this uh, steps bracket, what we're going to say is we're going to say we, we want it to happen in, let's say, let's do 30 for now and just see if that works um, and then end. Um, and then you might have seen animation being used in CSS, but what you may not know is that if you comma delimitate them, then you can use um, multiple animation types on one element. So what we're going to do here then is we're going to say, right, we've done uh, one uh, animation and we're going to put a comma and then we're going to load the second animation, which is carrot. Um, and we're going to say, let's say 0.4 seconds um, at the step end. Um, and we're going to roll that on infinite. So that's just going to keep happening. You can see there that literally as we've done that, the, the effect has taken place and the text has started to type. So that's exactly what we're going for. Um, and we're just going to put it as alternate. So how does that look? There we go. So alternate. So that's happening every other time now, which looks a little bit more like the, the standard typing effect that you get. So you can see there um, 
that we've done that. Now, what you may want to do after this is you may want to just adjust these values and just make sure that they're the best that they can be. Um, if you want, when you're adjusting the CSS, if you want the effect to happen again, you literally just get rid of like part of the selector so it no longer makes sense and then just put the selector back in um, and then that will uh, restart the the CSS for you. So I think that looks pretty good. I think what I might do is I might take that um, steps. So what this is basically saying is that um, with the um, animation name type, so from width uh, to from zero to 270 pixels, how many steps do you want that to take? So at the moment that's 30, but what may be better for you is to just like count the letters in it and just say, right, okay, so there's 25 letters, I'll do it in 25 steps. Or just find the value that works for you. I'm gonna lower that a little bit because I think that um, it's essentially a little bit too high. Um, and I think that looks quite, yeah, that looks quite good now. So I'm happy with that. So you can see that rather than loading a JavaScript library to do just a simple um, uh, typing effect, you can just use some custom CSS. Um, if you are gonna be doing lots of this um, and it's for a, a child theme or something like that, then I would still use typed JS or something like that. Um, but for just a simple line of text, just using CSS um, is pretty good too. Um, so that's the last effect for the, uh, the call to action module. Um, that we're going to go through today. Um, I'll field any questions if there are any. I don't see any right now, but we'll give a couple of minutes in case in the event that somebody does have questions. I think it was pretty straightforward and just well explained. So um, yeah, and I think once you've got the the, I'll I'll drop the CSS into a uh, into the comments um, on the video, and we'll also make sure that they're uploaded in the blog that follows. But it's right. just a case of, because it's CSS, I mean, by playing with it, you're not going to break anything. You're not going to kill anything. Um, take it away, play with the values, um, and see how it works for you. Awesome. Well, if anybody has, if no, where does that come from? If no one has any questions, then we can move on. I will say that this is the first of many tutorials that we're going to do called Supercharging the Divi modules, and we started with the CTA. Not really sure where we're going to next, SJ, but maybe what we can do is um, post a list of them so that people can know what's coming up and plan. You know what? I want to be a part of that webinar. I want to watch it. So, yeah, uh, I think I think the next one that we'll do will probably be sliders because I know that's quite a popular one. Um, okay. And the the idea behind that one will be. Um, to look at three effects that you would normally have to use a third party slider for, um, that with a little bit okay. of CSS and jQuery, you can essentially make happen with the default Divi slider. Boom. Hey, well, that sounds perfect. Awesome. Well, we still have no questions. So I think we're, I think we are good to go until next time. So SJ, thanks. Awesome jo job as always. And we will see everybody next week. Take care, everybody. Thank you to everybody that joined live. And if anybody has any questions who isn't watching this live, drop them in the comments and then we'll field them uh, throughout the week. Oh, hold on a second. We do have a question, SJ. Uh, Alex, asked, Alex asked if you could explain the no wrap. Um, I think the better thing that to was do would be to go up, but essentially it's one of those um, CSS reset um, properties um, that essentially what you wanna do is that you wanna stop um, default activity happening. Now, I think Divi does it by default, so you may not even need it um, in the CSS, but it's one of those things that it's better to have it and then make sure that things aren't um, happening weirdly, but it's to do with the, the type effect um, and where the the width stops and the overflow starts, uh, making sure that that all works properly. If that makes any, yeah, any sense yeah. at all. He said, "Ah," with an exclamation point. So I'm going with it made sense to Alex. So yeah. okay, good, awesome. Well, I think uh, there's no more questions. We're signing off again.
Yeah, he, he basically said that explains why most of the time it has zero effect on code. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, it's, um, most, most themes will do um, what's called a, a CSS reset. So essentially all browsers will behave ever so slightly differently to other browsers. So what they'll do is they'll create a list of, of CSS rules for everything that's going to happen after the fact. Um, and make sure that they've reset that so that you're getting default behavior across all browsers instead of weird stuff happening if, if you're using um, Edge or Chrome or something like that. Awesome. Well, this is perfect timing because I have family coming in and grandkids. So we'll Good see times. you guys next week. Take care, everybody. Cheers, guys. <laughs>